Love Chance 2021. And now we want to introduce you to the next speaker. It's Victoria Soltes. Victoria Soltes uh, is the founder of the payment consulting firm PSP Angels, uh, which helps online business, uh, businesses uh, optimizing their payment flows and costs by finding the best payment and banking solutions. She used to lecture at the University of West London, and she is a regular speaker at blockchain, fintech, and investment conference. She said, everybody shall have uh, the right to decide how and where they want to spend their money. And now she will talk about payment via crypto. Please welcome Victoria. Thank you, everyone. Do I have the opportunity to change the slides in any way? Hi, everyone. I will talk about a little bit about the new ways to collect payments and the tax and the financial aspects of any crypto blockchain issues. I think I'm not going to save the world within uh, you know, 15 minutes, so unfortunately there is a limited uh, time which is uh, available for us now. But um, I try to cover as much as I can and I try to stay the obvious, which is uh, giving you a bit of uh, tips and hints of uh, how to tackle the problem. Can we change the slide? <laughs> Right, so uh, my name is Victoria Schultes. <laughs> no worries, thank you. My name is Victoria Schultes, and uh, I uh, started up in Cyprus uh, back at the Wild Wild West era when everything was about the offshore culture and uh, optimizing the taxes. And uh, I still have my accounting, audit, and fiduciary firm uh, in Cyprus. But um, when I talk to my clients, who are mainly from the higher risk verticals, we are working a lot with uh, betting companies, for example, as Stefan said, that uh, they are over-regulated and that, therefore, you know, banking is not really available for, uh, for them. We realized that the taxman is no longer the issue in many cases, but actually how you move your funds is. And uh, finding uh, merchant accounts, Visa and MasterCard acceptance, or the right banking facilities, fiat banking facilities for your project, sometimes it gives you a bigger headache than, than actual um, you know, uh, the, the tax itself. So um, then I uh, partnered up uh, with Oxygia Consulting, which is uh, specifically concentrating on the iGaming and the gambling industry, and we are trying to solve uh, their problems when it comes to payments. And I'm also the member of Director Chambers in Malta. Our offices are in Cyprus, Malta, and Hungary, and I also like to paint, and I have a cooking channel on Instagram. I do amazing uh, banana bread. So um, what do we do? Basically, we are helping online businesses who are deemed to be high risk. So those are the forex companies, investment companies, gambling, uh, adult content companies, and of course, crypto exchanges and anything which has to do with cryptocurrencies. Normally, they are frowned upon when it comes to traditional banking. So we try to find them the merchant accounts, banking facilities, and try to shed some light how this very difficult payment industry works for them. And that's why uh, we are these uh, payment consulting uh, for them. So what is the issue when uh, we are talking about uh, payments through the cryptocurrencies? What is the problem and why do we need to obviously talk about it? Well, I personally believe that there is a huge confusion about it. Even now, I'm just going on different speeches. To be honest with you, no one really has a clue, right? So when it comes to taxation, when it comes to regulation, everybody is just as clueless as everyone else. Of course, when you're talking to your tax advisor, they might have a bit of uh, information which could be right or not, but when you're going to these telegram groups, you know, the blockchain heroes or, you know, crypto kings and whatever, there's always one person who is like, yeah, definitely we need to do that because that's the right taxation uh, uh, approach to that. Is it really true or not? Would you really bet with your money on Bob's advice on telegram? <laughs> Maybe it's not a good thing. So the problem, I think, is that the banks and definitely the government governments are just still not ready. Um, people who are making decisions in these positions have no tools and quite frankly, they know skills to check or very, uh, uh, verify uh, whatever is really happening on the market. So if you are submitting a tax return, really the 60 year old tax advisor from Cyprus going to go on the blockchain and figure out that what is happening on the wallet is, is a really what you really uh, 
said is tr true. And also the very important part is that there are a lot of gains which happened over time. So going back to those kind of era when all the wallets were anonymous, it could be very hard. And uh, I've got a couple of clients who are just pulling out cold wallets. Five years ago, they put some blockchain, uh, uh, some Bitcoin on. Now they are trying to cash out. And the cold wallet technically does not really have any source of funds uh, proof, right? Because the exchange where uh, they started the cold wallet might not be even around. So when we are talking about crypto, we've got obviously pro and contra aspects uh, of that. We all know. Crypto is good because it's quick, it's traceable, and it's cheaper. Like oh, now we know that what's happening with the Ethereum and the, and the gas fees here. But uh, technically, that was the whole point that it's going to be cheaper and quicker and better than traditional banking. And the whole idea is that anonym, which is good because it's anonym, but it's bad because it's anonym, right? So from the, from the taxation po uh, uh, point of view, from the banking point of view, when the banker needs to trace the source of funds, when the government needs to check if you really you know, paid your taxes after all your gains, anonymity is not necessarily uh, you know, a good thing. And of course, they are also non-regulated or not as regulated as we want it to be. So there is no crystal clear uh, point of how to tax uh, different crypto assets. And as we mentioned, that it definitely needs some uh, serious technical knowledge. Yes, we are within this industry. So for us, it's, e it's, it's, it's easy to say that, yes, the blockchain is traceable. But if you're trying to tell this to, to the everyday tax advisor, uh, for example, in uh, Hungary, for example, it's, it's, it's very hard because the person does not have the technical knowledge um, to even tackle the problem. And as we mentioned, it's very hard to verify the source for many people, even though that we are talking about the blockchain. So what are the main tax issues that you need to think about? There is no universal agreement on the status of how to handle the crypto assets. And unfortunately, this is the, the, the truth. So when you're going to Portugal, they have a completely different tax regime, which I heard that it's free even though that I wouldn't really uh, put my money on that. But I've heard that there are no taxation issues on your crypto assets and on the training in Portugal, other than, for example, in Germany. Uh, the problem is that we are in the European Union. So technically, the taxation should not create different uh, treatment for the same individual if you are keeping your money here, there, or if you're a resident here, there, uh, in Europe, but unfortunately, this is still the case. So what is it? Is it an asset? Is it an investment? Do you have to pay capital gains after that? Or do you pay income tax after that? And the main problem is that just by the time you figure out the answer, everything is changing, right? So uh, countries are coming up with new regulations. Uh, the tax office uh, issues a new um, um, idea and, and uh, kind of um, ruling out. So the very, very important thing is that always try to uh, speak to your lawyer and get a tax ruling. Uh, whenever is the case, mainly when it's the, the, the large amount involved, because you shouldn't really trust anyone, definitely not the person on Telegram who is giving all these good advice, but, uh, but try to get the, the tax ruling from the country, because I personally wouldn't like to trust my money on anything unless it's stemmed and signed by the government and the tax office. So let's talk about, uh, uh, I brought you uh, two case studies. One. I had an individual who bought uh, Bitcoin back in 2013 on an exchange which is closed now. And the crypto is stored on a cold wallet ever since. Now he wants to cash out now over 1 million euro worth of Bitcoin. So we're not talking about like 10,000 and the tax office says, hmm, okay, you made a bit of a mistake, you got a bit of penalty and you still survive. I mean, 1 million euro, if you think about it, even 20% on that is a significant amount of money. So he asked me what to do, Victoria. Well, I told him that, very important, you need to get some kind of tax ruling from different countries. If you can afford to live in a country and be a tax resident in that country over 183 days, as we know, either you can uh, lay your eye on Cyprus, as we mentioned, to Portugal, but do not move the family before you get the proper tax ruling and you get a case study, um, official um, 
uh, stamped and signed document from the tax office saying that if this is the case, that is going to be the tax implication. Because if you're listening to your tax advisor and God forbid that the guy makes a mistake, at the end of the day, it's your pocket who is uh, suffering this decision. So very, very important. Don't move anywhere. Don't become a tax resident just as now. Ask different tax rulings and then make a decision. Now, I had a very uh, interesting other uh, subject as well. When I had a company in Cyprus which was filling the tax return in 2019. And uh, if any of you are familiar with Cyprus, you know that there are a huge delay from the tax office to actually uh, ask you to file your tax return. So even though now it's in 2021, there are still people who are filing tax return back in 2018. But anyway, Cyprus is... Um, uh, having a, a bit of a more understanding for the late filers. Now, the company got paid in crypto from different offshore partners for obvious reasons, because the offshore partners not necessarily uh, uh, like to pay in fiat because they don't have the relevant banking facilities. It was cheaper, easier for them, so they sent some uh, crypto payments. And the company in question did not hedge, and they got lucky, and they got some gains from exchange differences. They did not cash out anything, so the money is still on the books, but the source of funds is not really accepted by the banks. So if they want to cash out, the banks are asking the, what was the source of funds. Offshore crypto, hmm, really? Okay, let me dig a bit deeper. So they didn't really cash out anything. So the other problem that on the 2019 tax return in Cyprus, there is no place on the tax return, there is no box to put down that uh, there is a crypto gain, right? So where are you gonna put it? Also the main problem was that, was it a realized or unrealized profit? Because the money is still there, the, you, you didn't cash out, do you need to pay tax after that? And we are chasing this case for, I would say now, for a good half a year uh, with the tax office, and it's very, very hard to find a person who takes the responsibility for the opinion what they are saying. Obviously no one really has a clue. So in this case, I, my personal opinion is that um, they will just declare how they declare, and then later on when the tax office is catching up with, uh, with the taxation uh, uh, rules, maybe they can revisit the subject, but as of today, there is no fixed answer from the tax office how to treat this case. So the company most probably is gonna be, uh, pay zero tax, and uh, they can actually um, get away with it because the tax office does not really have any certain idea about that. So how to take advantage of this situation, right? So there are a good opportunity that, okay, no one really knows, maybe I can get away with something. Always be up to date. That's why it's important to, to go to these kind of uh, uh, conferences, always keep your eye on the market, see what is new, uh, because there you can get a lot of information that which tax laws offer better conditions. Maybe the person from Telegram is not right, but it could give you a good idea where to start to sniff around and ask the relevant people and dig deeper in the subject. Also, what give, uh, government give grants and benefits? Because taxation is one thing, but for example, in Malta, you can get a lot of uh, government uh, grants and a lot of government benefits if you have any kind of blockchain-related product. So it's not always about the taxation, because maybe you have to pay here, but you gain so much there. And where are the better banking opportunities? Because at the end of the day you still need to pay salaries you still need to have traditional banking which country offers better banking facilities because tax it could be expensive but if you don't have the relevant banking and financial facilities to support your operation at the end of the day you might actually pay more and the bottom line always ask for tax ruling because you shouldn't really believe anyone unless you see it signed so to summarize what we mentioned Keep your eyes open. Always ask your peers, because maybe someone knows something. Don't believe it, but ask around and see, hmm, okay, maybe it's an interesting thing to dig deeper. Always be informed. And at the end of the day, if you are talking about a large amount of money, I personally would really advise to have someone on your team who understands how the traditional fiat uh, banking system is 
um, treating blockchain and crypto projects because it does not cost a lot to have someone, but it can cost a lot not to. So you will need a payment guy, someone with a deep industry experience and network to figure out things for you quicker, cheaper, and more effectively. So you can reach me uh, at email at victoria.psvangels.com or you can Skype me and I'm very happy to answer any questions. Uh, I don't know now or later or we don't have any more time. Um, we do a panel discussion okay, and later, so, so we have one speaker more, and after this we start the panel and great. everybody can ask all the questions they all want right. to ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria.